Hello everybody and welcome to the final speculation video for Jurassic World Evolution 3 for now. Like we'll have to wait until a lot more news comes out to really speculate on a bit more but I wanted to get my initial speculations out there on the species and what features we could potentially see. So the previous videos we've done are the dinosaurs and the Cenozoic species, both of which deserve their own videos but now we are looking at the other species. So the pterosaurs and other flying reptiles, the marine species, the, the habitat reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, synapses, all sorts of different creatures that could potentially come into Jurassic World Evolution 3 from the, from the prehistoric age. So without further ado, let's get started. Our first group of animals is the flying species. So there's a whole variety of flying species that could be introduced. Some of my favourites would be Hatsogopteryx, Ramphorhynchus, Thelosodromus and Pterodostro. All species that would bring unique animations to the game, Hatsogopteryx being the largest flying reptile known, Ramphorhynchus being an avid piscivore, Thelosodromus would be a very interesting uh, pterosaur that is a relative of Tapijara but I think has a more impressive crest, and Pterodostro would be a crustacean eater so that would be pretty cool. Compangopterus, also known as Monkey Dactyle, is from the Jurassic period and is the only animal outside of the primates that we have found to have an opposable thumb. So it would be very interesting to see that gripping onto trees and onto prey. Darwinopterus is another crested pterosaur from the Jurassic, that would be a really cool addition. These guys are big enough to eat small dinosaurs, so I think that would be a pretty cool thing to see. Like it potentially coming down and grabbing a compy off the ground. Pterodactylus is one of the more famous pterosaurs, inspiring the avid pterodactyl um, name, even though pterodactyls are somewhat based off pteranodons. Scaphognathus would be another pretty cool species of a similar size to Ramparhynchus and Dimorphodon. This guy would be a pretty cool addition in a more neutral looking species without any crazy aspects like jagged, te jagged spiky teeth or a massive T-Rex like head. Cryodracon is one of the largest Ashdarkids known, and from the Northern Hemisphere, I believe, as cryo means frozen, like in Cryolophosaurus. It would be a pretty cool addition to get some other large Ashdarkids alongside the Hatseg and Quetzalcoatlus. And I did, while I was doing this research, I found out Thanatos Dracon that we got in the Park Manager's Collection Pack is actually one of the largest species we know of, so that's pretty cool. Nathosaurus is another pretty cool species in a similar league to that of Ciarodactylus and I think would be a pretty cool addition as it is a species I've seen represented a lot on like those you know those charts of pterosaur heads to show the diversity I've seen Nathosaurus on there quite a lot. Patinosaurus would be another cool addition as a Triassic pterosaur this would be I think our first Triassic, spe Triassic flying species. And I would certainly love to see it added to the game as Patinosaurus was a little favourite of mine back with Walking with Dinosaurs. Nyctosaurus is another very famous pterosaur that I would love to see. Even though we had Barbarodactylus in the late Cretaceous pack, it didn't really have the massive crest that is indicative of the Nyctosaur ge um, genus of pterosaurs. So I think Nyctos Nyctosaurus would be able to put that on full display. Our final pterosaurs would be the famous Ornithochirus, best known from Walking with Dinosaurs. And I think it would just be a cool way to get a neutral looking Ornithochirid in the game. As the Marodactylus has a, some really long teeth, Tropiognathus has had its head a bit manipulated and particularly crest on the snout. So I think getting Ornithochirus in here resembling some of its Walking with Dinosaurs appearance would be a bit, would be a pretty cool addition. Ludodactylus would also be a cool addition as sort of the toothy Pteranodon. We do have the Jurassic Park Pteranodon, but the Ludodactylus would certainly be a cool addition as it is also from Brazil. It seems to be a very popular place for many of the most famous pterosaurs. And yeah, I, I would just love to see a toothy Pteranodon. It, it, that's not a, a Jurassic Park 3 one. Caparamus is another interesting looking pterosaur. Sort of reminding me of a Rhinoceros Auklet, a seabird that's a relative of Puffins, but it, it is a very bizarre looking pterosaur and I think we could use a lot more bizarre species. 
And a little bit more of a neutral pterosaur, which Aegeangopterus, a large as dark from Asia, would be a very cool addition to see. Moving on to our aquatic species. So first up we have some reptiles, Prognathodon, one of the largest mosasaurs ever discovered. It, was, it would certainly be a great ad addition to see a more accurate, very large mosasaur. Because Tylosaurus, it's a bit more stylized than Mosasaurus as well, the Jurassic World one. So getting sort of a neutral mosasaur that is huge, but also having a more accurate appearance, I think would be pretty cool. Dacosaurus would be another very cool addition as a relative of crocodile, sort of like a marine crocodile almost. Dacosaurus would be a very cool addition as it is another Jurassic uh, marine reptile that isn't a pliosaur, a, well, a plesiosaur, or anything else that isn't a Dacosaurus. But Dacosaurus is certainly an animal I'd love to see to give a bit more diversity. And speaking of diversity, we have Tanistrophius, one of the most bizarre Triassic reptiles ever known. With its extremely long neck, small body, and long tail, I would certainly love to see this guy try and utilize the rock platform. As I, I think that would be the most appropriate thing for it, as this guy certainly wouldn't be able to swim forever. But it would just be a very bizarre marine reptile that I think he would make, would, it would fit in the game quite well. Pliosaurus is another very cool marine reptile I'd love to see. It's one of the largest predators of the Jurassic. It is also nicknamed Predator X. But uh, yeah, Pliosaurus is just one of the coolest marine reptiles, and I'd certainly love to see this guy alongside the Kronosaurus and the uh, Lyplurodon, as I think this guy would have a much bigger head and a much more, a much thicker jaw than that of the Kronosaurus. Temnodontosaurus is a good mid-range ichthyosaur that we could see added to the game, resembling somewhat of an ichthyosaurus, but for being closer to the size of a Shonisaurus at least in comparison. I think it would be a really cool addition as it is a very large ichthyosaur and is a proper predator, so I think that would be pretty cool. Symbospondylus is another predatory ichthyosaur that would be a very cool addition. Another Triassic marine reptile, Symbospondylus, was actually one of the largest of the ichthyosaurs. I think it would be a pretty cool addition here as it would also somewhat complete the sea monsters lineup alongside that of Camaroceros. A giant orthocone from the Ordovician and Silurian seas. And with that, we can also get Megaloraptus, one of the most famous of the sea scorpions. Certainly one of the most notable that we've seen in Paleomedia, as any Minecraft mod I've seen that adds prehistoric animals has included Megaloraptus. But Jurassic World Evolution 2 you could follow suit and introduce this very famous Eurypterid. Some pretty cool species would be Hesperornis, a semi-aquatic bird. That would be a pretty cool addition. Lacking exposed, like, protruding wings, it really just has legs. But Hesperornis would certainly be a pretty cool and diverse addition to the Lagoon roster, as it is a bird, and I, I really can't think of many other birds that would be considered. We also have its main predator, Zephactinus, or also known as the X-Fish. It's one of the most... It's one of the largest and most famous of the Cretaceous fish, and I would certainly love to see this guy. Some of the large fish would be the lead Sigthes, one of the largest fish ever known. A gentle filter feeder from the waters of the, great, uh, of the late Jurassic. And yeah, I think this guy would be a pretty cool addition to just see cruising through the lagoons, just filtering in plankton and stuff like that. On the opposite end of the feeding spectrum, we have Helicoprion a shark species from the Permian, with its most notable feature being a buzzsaw-like bottom jaw that cuts its prey in two. It's certainly one of the most bizarre sharks out there, but I would certainly love to see it. And since we just got Megalodon, the, the, can, the can for sharks has certainly been opened. Some other cool marine reptiles would be Romaliosaurus, one of the most famous marine reptiles and one of the most important as it was one of the first discovered. It is from the British Isles and I think it was discovered either by Mary Anning or by some other uh, paleontologist around that time. But it is certainly a very cool plesiosaur species with that short neck and that long tail. It's sort of a mix between a 
a long neck plesiosaur, and a pliosaur. Golly, Karinkops is a very bizarre plesiosaur, with its very short neck, big body, and long head. It's certainly a very rare occurrence in the late Cretaceous, as many of the pliosaurs have died out and been replaced by the mosasaurs. And Dolly Karinkops would certainly be a very cool addition here as well, as sort of that much smaller um, pliosaur look. Stathocanthus is a very interesting shark. I think it's actually classified as ratfish now, but it does resemble a shark in a lot of paleo, paleo art that I've seen. But this guy has often been nicknamed the ironing board shark because of its bizarre dorsal fin. And I think this guy would be a pretty cool addition as it is not really too large at all, it's rather quite small. And I, I think that would be a pretty cool diverse addition to see in the lagoons alongside stuff like Dunphilosteus. Another shark could be Herbotus, a horned, a supposedly horned species of shark from the Jurassic period. And I think a little bit of the Cretaceous as well. And I would certainly love to see these guys, as these guys were really cool to see in Walking with Dinosaurs. And would, I, I would certainly love to see these in our Jurassic Lagoons. I say I would certainly a lot. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, Herbotus is a very cool shark. Much like the earlier Tanistrophius, Placodus would also be able to utilize the Lagoon Rock. It's, it's certainly one of the most bizarre marine reptiles I've ever seen looking more like a swimming lizard than many of the others that we know of. I mean, mosasaurs are pretty much swimming lizards too, but you know. But Placodus would have a very interesting diet, feeding on mussels and bivalves on the ocean floor. I think that'd be a pretty cool new lagoon feeder, as with all these di diverse marine species, there's certainly a lot of different lagoon prey that could be introduced, like ammonites, squid, mussels and bivalves, crabs, all sorts of things. The Rhinosaurus is another cool ichthyosaur we could get with its rapier-like snout. I think it would be, make it the, a proper swordfish of the lagoons. Protoxy Rhino is another cool shark that we could get from the late Cretaceous, resembling somewhat of a great white shark, and I think could, alongside Squally Corax, could be a proper live shark feeder. Being around the same size as the great white shark, it could, it could certainly make some good prey for the mosasaurs. Even though Protoxy Rhino was, was a proper predator in its own right, but still, the sharks don't really stand much of a chance against the Jurassic World Mosasaur. Globodens is another bizarre Mosasaur that I would love to see with its sort of dome-like teeth for crushing shells. That would be a very interesting sort of uh, kill animation for an ammonite and not be very effective on many of the other marine reptiles, I wouldn't think. Our last set of reptiles involves Ophthalmosaurus, arguably one of the most famous ichthyosaurs because of walking with dinosaurs. I'd just love to see it with a much shorter, rounder uh, snout compared to the ichthyosaurus we currently have, with a very sharp, um, almost blade-like jaw that... It's, some, it's very stylized, but the Ophthalmosaurus has a more... It, it, it seems more natural, that, that sort of jaw. Cryptoclitus is another cool species from the Jurassic period, another plesiosaur with a short neck. And yeah, this guy is also featured in Walking with Dinosaurs, and yeah, I'm a sucker for Walking with Dinosaurs, honestly. Kai Kai Filu would also be a, a very cool mosasaur from the late Cretaceous, one of the largest known, and from the Southern Ocean. And <laughs> there's not much else to say, really. There's a lot of cool mosasaurs, like Plotosaurus, another very large species that could make a fine addition nonetheless. Rhizodus would be a pretty cool predatory fish we could see, a low-fin species from the Carboniferous, and certainly has a very different body plan to many of the other fish we could get, like that of Morsonia, being very different again, resembling more like a coelacanth, but much, much bigger. Or we could also see Onchopristus, a very large sawfish from the same waters as Morsonia, and the predators that would have fed on them like Spinosaurus and Sarcosuchus. Our last fish consideration is Hyneria, a very large predatory fish from the Devonian that would make a very cool addition. Now onto the reptiles. Some crocodilian considerations from the Mesozoic would be the very famous Dinosuchus, 
a large relative of alligators from North America that infamously fed on dinosaurs. Another giant crocodilian that is perhaps equally famous is Sarcosuchus, a much longer snouted species from Africa and South America. We could also see the herbivorous land crocodile Simosuchus from Madagascar. I would certainly love to see these little cuties added to the game, given how Lystrosaurus behaves, Simosuchus could have a very similar demeanour. Caprosuchus could, have, could be no more different than it already is. And also known as the boar crocodile, it would certainly be a very cool land crocodilian species that would hunt down dinosaurs and challenge raptors. Another species we could see is Gonopholus, a more natural sized crocodilian that would be a more so, sort of a subordinate species to the giants that we have and it would be a very cool comparison between a more modern sized crocodilian compared to the absolute giants. Another giant would be Stamatosuchus, a very large pelican like crocodilian also from the same waters as Sarcosuchus and Spinosaurus and would certainly be a very interesting addition, gulping in large shoals of fish all in one gulp. Smilosuchus would also be a very interesting addition, one of the more bizarre looking crocodilians from the late Triassic. At least I think it was the late Triassic, it was somewhere in the Triassic there, but it would be another very peculiar addition. However, perhaps the most peculiar of these is Armadillosuchus, a species with m more armor plating than most of other crocodilians and I don't have too much information on it, but it would certainly be a very interesting and diverse pick. Now onto one of my favourite groups of animals, the Permian to Triassic Synapsids. My favourite consideration of these synapsids is Inostrancevia, one of my personal favourite prehistoric animals of all time. With its large sabre teeth and rather dog-like appearance, it would certainly be one of the most powerful and imposing predators that the dinosaurs could witness. Moss chops as well is a very bizarre herbivore that would be a very cool addition to see, alongside that of Lysawishia, basically Lystrosaurus's much larger cousin. Resembling other members of its Dicynodont group, it would certainly be one of the largest herbivores in this group of animals. Adaphosaurus is pretty much the herbivorous equivalent to Dimetrodon, and I would love to see these guys in sort of like an eco, an, an accurate ecosystem. Seeing the Dimetrodons hunt down a Daphosaurus like we did in Walking with Monsters would be a very cool thing to see in the game. Perhaps the most bizarre species is Staminosuchus, with its very odd, almost intelligent like skull. It would be one of the weirdest of the animals that we could get from this era, and I think it was actually a herbivore, so it would, it would certainly be an interesting herbivore to see from the Synapsid group. Cotolorhynchus is also quite bizarre, looking m much like a dewback from Star Wars, but having a much, much smaller head. These guys would be very cool to see, as they are much larger than most of the other species mentioned. Cyanognathus would be a very cool predator from the Triassic period, one of the most ferocious predators from that, from that period in time. It would be a very cool addition to see alongside animals like Coelophysis, although I don't know if they lived in the same time. Not quite sure. But another species would be Spinacodon. I could, oh, almost uh, messed it up there. But these guys ha sort of have that head that is reminiscent of a more accurate Dimetrodon. Though they don't have the impressive sail, it would certainly be a great addition nonetheless. Now onto some true reptiles. So this is one of, another one of my favourite groups, the reptiles of the Permian and the Triassic. Postosuchus is by far the most famous, being a species that was made, made that probably gained most of its popularity from walking with dinosaurs being the slowest predator ever, but it has changed quite a bit since then, resorting to a more bipedal posture and looking cool while doing it. Scutosaurus is another large herbivore from the Permian, a paraeosaur and relative of modern turtles, this animal was Inostrancevia's natural prey. And yeah, one of these guys would certainly make a great um, Permian equivalent to the Ankylosaurs. Erythrosuchus is another very bizarre carnivorous reptile with its massive head. I guess this guy perhaps resembles a dewback a bit more, but these guys would be very cool to see. 
However, nothing compares to Phacelosuchus, the largest non-dinosaur predator of all time. This, this guy was absolutely insane, living in the Triassic period of South America, I think around the same time as animals like Herrerasaurus. So it'd be very interesting to see these guys interact, and this guy to see alongside many of the other dinosaurs that we have, and see how it compares to many species like that of Carnotaurus or Allosaurus. Some other interesting, um, more bizarre picks would be Hinotus, a very pancake-shaped turtle that would make a great addition to freshwater rivers, or Silurosauravus, a gliding lizard from the Permian. Prestosuchus is very similar in appearance to that of Fasolosuchus and Postosuchus, however it did spend most of its time on all fours and wasn't quite as large as Fasolosuchus. And another bizarre species is Shringosaurus, a very bizarre reptile with horns and a long neck from India and India could certainly use a lot more species as I said in my dinosaur video. Now on to some species I know a lot of people have been excited to hear about, the Cenozoic Reptiles. The Cenozoic had a whole variety of different reptiles, basically a giant for each major group alive today. The giant lizard Megalania from Australia is certainly people's top choice. However, one of the most interesting would perhaps be Titanoboa, as it would certainly be, it, it is curious to see how Frontier could manage a habitat snake. They haven't managed to do that in Planet Zoo, and many games don't really have a properly working snake that isn't outside of a cutscene or is just in place. But Titanoboa would certainly be my top choice for a snake to be added to Jurassic World Evolution. Purosaurus is the largest crocodilian that we currently know of from South America, I want to say, because I think it's also called a giant caiman. And yeah, these guys would be absolutely nuts to see alongside Dinosuchus and Sarko. Carbonemis is another species from around the same time as Titanoboa in the Paleocene, basically the immediate period after the dinosaur extinction. And this was certainly one of the largest of the tortoises, unless it was a turtle. It was... <laughs> It was one of the two, but it would be very cool nonetheless. Baron Asuchus is one of my favourite additions from the Cenozoic that we could see. A large land crocodile of a similar appearance to that of the Rauasuchus, the like Postasuchus and Fasilasuchus from the Triassic. Sort of a remnant of a forgotten age. But these guys were one of the largest predators in the Cenozoic and would be an interesting pack hunter. Quincana would be another bizarre land crocodile that we could see. The natural rel um, relative uh, rival, I should say, to Megalania, as these guys would have come into contact quite often, and I would certainly love to see that recreated here. Riposuchus would be another cool crocodilian, a giant gharial from South America, and yeah, it'd be great to get a proper diversity of crocodilians. And Maolania is my last reptile consideration, a large species from I think New Caledonia, although it could have also been living in Australia as well, I'm not too sure, but they have been known to be one of the largest of the land turtles, or tortoises, it's like Carbonemis, it's one of the two, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this guy sort of resembles an ankylosaur with its um, spiked uh, armoured tail and its spiked armoured head. But yeah, it would be one of the most interesting turtles we could see. Some final considerations could be Gigantophus, a snake from around the same time as Titanoboa, but I think living in either Africa or Asia. Uh, not too sure, but it would be another large snake that we could see. Another large crocodile would be Baru, a very large species from Australia that hunted the megafauna of the time. Basically, Australia had a giant one of everything. <laughs> So it had a giant snake, a giant crocodile, giant turtles, <laughs> and giant lizards. Another cool crocodilian is Bovarasuchus, also known as the hoofed crocodile, another land crocodilian consideration outside of Quincana. And lastly, Stupendemis, one of the largest freshwater turtles ever known, would also be a great addition here. Moving on to the amphibians, one of my favourite groups of animals from prehistory. There are many giant amphibians that could be considered, like the instantly recognisable Kulasuchus from Australia, 
all the, also the Mastodon Saurus, a species with its lower, its two largest lower teeth poking up through the top jaw. I think this guy's from the Triassic, and it would certainly be interesting to see that re recreated in the game, the teeth going through their slots in the upper jaw. And Thracosaurus is another large amphibian we could see from the Carboniferous, no, Devonian. <laughs> Uh, I, I've lost track at this point, but yeah, it would be a cool addition as well. Platyhistrix is perhaps the most unique of these amphibians, with large neural spines so somewhat similar to that of a Dimetrodon. Crassodorhinus scoticus is another very cool animal. With tiny little legs, it wouldn't really do well on land. But this guy you probably recognize, not, by, not from this picture, um, from Prehistoric Park, it was one of the species that Nigel Marvin was excited about finding in the Carboniferous. Diplocaulus is another very famous amphibian with his boomerang-shaped head. I would certainly love to see this guy. Beelzebufo would be another very cool addition. One of the largest frogs ever known, living in Madagascar and feeding on small dinosaurs. And Tiktaalik, a lobe-finned fish, not quite amphibian. It's, it's an intermediate species. So I'm almost wondering why I put it in the amphibians uh, lineup at all, but you know, you get the gist. Tiktaalik would be a cool addition nonetheless. One of the first animals to make it onto land that was a vertebrate. Ichthyostega would be another cool amphibian that we could see, one of the more salamander-like amphibians. Phryonosuchus is perhaps the largest amphibian we could see, resembling more like a crocodile than an actual amphibian. Metoposaurus would be another cool species, sort of like a Coolosuchus, but a little bit different. And Oriops, one of the largest amphibians known from, I think, the Devonian or Carboniferous. It, it's in that time when rainforests were starting to take over the world, and yeah, Oriops would be a very interesting addition too. And our last diverse picks are the Carboniferous invertebrates. So there are only four very famous species that I can think of. Arthropleura, the giant car-sized millipede that was a herbivore but also blind and could rear up to look you right in the eye even though it probably wouldn't be able to see you but it would be able to sense you. Meganeura would also be a cool addition here, the largest dragonfly known. Almonoscorpius, a large scorpion species. And Megarachne, a eurypterid that used to be considered a large spider. And that is all, that is all the other species that I would have considered for Jurassic World Evolution 3. There may be many, many more, but yeah, <laughs> that was a lot to get through. Amphibians, invertebrates, marine species, flying species, all sorts of reptiles. Yeah, it was a long list. But yeah, let me know what of the, which of these species you'd like to see in Jurassic World Evolution 3 the most in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would certainly appreciate a like. And if you want to help me get to 2000 and beyond, subscribers I mean, I would certainly appreciate a subscribe as we have gotten a lot of views recently because of this series. But yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Who knows, the next video might be when Planet Zoo's next DLC is being announced. Or I'll potentially cover the new Prehistoric Kingdom update on the public test branch. Might do that one actually. Well, I'll see you in the next video nonetheless. Bye.